So this month we're going back to have a look at solubility and some demonstrations you can do to do with intermolecular forces. Now there are lots of very established demonstrations out there to do with intermolecular forces. One that comes to mind, of course, is the addition of acetone to polystyrene packing peanuts and watching those little sort of uh, foam beads crush down into a very small volume. We're going to be having a look at a couple of demonstrations that you might not have seen today, um, unless, of course, you're into fishing, in which case you may have already used this first one. Now, the first demonstration I'm going to show you today involves these PVA mini bags. Um, they're used by fishermen, I understand that it's used for coarse fishing and the idea is that uh, it's a bag that you can load with some bait and you cast it out and the bag dissolves away leaving a little pile of bait near where you're going to be placing your hook and so it's more likely to attract fish to come and be captured. But these are really cool for actually showing how plastic can actually dissolve in water if the combination of intermolecular forces are correct. Now we're using polyvinyl alcohol here and this is a hydrolyzed form of uh, polyvinyl acetate. So there are quite a lot of uh, alcohol groups on the chain of these molecules which can form hydrogen bond interactions with the water and therefore be broken down by the water. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate this is actually just get some of the, one of these bags and put in some food colouring with a little bit of water that I've added just to help see what's going on with the colours. And when you put it in the water you get a really beautiful effect. I'm going to hold it near the front and just hold it high up in the water so that we can actually see that the plastic is beginning to be degraded and as it dissolves we get this sort of flow of plastic and food colouring that sort of sinks down to the bottom of the beaker. Here it goes. To get a really nice effect. Now if you leave that bag it will very rapidly dissolve and it's just a nice way of showing that plastic doesn't always behave in the way that you would expect based on your knowledge of a plastic bag. Now of course we've seen here how a substance with lots of hydrogen bonding can potentially interact with uh, water. What we're now going to have a look at is the same kind of thing from reverse. So we're going to have a look at a polymer that has got very little capacity to hydrogen bond, in fact it can't hydrogen bond at all, and see how it can be degraded by different solvents. So we've seen how a polymer which has lots of hydroxyl groups which are able to hydrogen bond to water can be substantially broken down by water. Now of course we have a different polymer here um, and that's latex which is essentially polyisoprene. Now that's a very hydrophobic polymer and, and of course we can see we've got some water balloons here. This, this demonstration works just as fine with uh, larger balloons. Make sure you're using pretty cheap ones though other, otherwise you could be waiting a while for it to work. You also want to make sure that your balloon is really as full as it can be with water so you've got like um, a proper pear shape to, to the balloons that you have. Okay, and what we're going to be doing is testing the uh, resistance of this latex to two different uh, compounds. We've got some glycerol here and I've got some baby oil here which is primarily uh, mineral oil. Now the one balloons on my right here have actually been sort of marinating in glycerol for, for some time and it doesn't really seem to be having much of an effect on them. Um, I'm going to pour some baby oil over the other balloons and just, there we go, I want to rub that through, just a gentle rub to make sure it's coating the whole balloon. Okay, I'm going to do the same with the, I should probably swat, switch hands so that I'm not touching these other balloons with the same stuff. There we go. 
And you can be fairly generous with this. So I'll put a little bit more of this on. Okay. And a little bit more. Now all you have to do is wait a few seconds. On the left hand side, the mineral oil, those um, hydrocarbon chains should be working their way into the latex structure, acting, I guess, a little bit like a plasticizer, just getting between those chain chains and weakening them just enough to perhaps break the balloon. On the right hand side, we shouldn't see any kind of an effect. Now it's possible, depending on the type of balloon you've got, that you may actually find it quite resistant to mineral oil. If you find yourself waiting a little bit too long, it's handy to have a couple of drops of cyclohexane nearby um, because that tends to be really lethal for the latex. And there we go. So a nice little demonstration to show how different solvents can have different effects on materials depending on the types of intermolecular forces they have.